docker compose up. With that single command, I just spun up a React application, an Express API server, and a MongoDB database fully configured and ready to interact with. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the whole Docker Compose setup that I used, and if you stick around to the end of the video, you have all the information you need to run a multi-container application of your own. Hey team, Sid here with DevOps Directive, bringing you the information you need to level up your DevOps and cloud infrastructure skills. On this channel, I create a mixture of informational videos as well as tutorials like this one, so if you're new here, consider subscribing. Let's get into it. Docker containers enable you to bundle up an application along with all of its dependencies into a standalone package called an image that can be run consistently across a variety of platforms. That being said, each container is only designed to run a single process. Many applications are composed of multiple services that need to work together in coordination and communicate with each other over network requests. For example, one popular application technology stack consists of a React.js application on the front end, an Express.js-based API, and a MongoDB database to persist the data. This is known as the MERN stack. If we had to configure all this manually, it would require a sequence of five or more Docker commands to set up all of the necessary services, the shared network, data volumes, etc. Luckily, we don't have to do that because Docker Compose allows us to declare, declare all of this as a single configuration file and then handles all of the necessary commands for us. To get started, I followed a tutorial I found online to set up a basic MERN application that allows the user to perform CRUD, create, read, update, and delete operations on a set of fictitious movie records. I'll link to that post in the description below, and I've also provided all the code used today for this example within the DevOps Directive GitHub repo. With that application as the base, I then created Docker files for the React client as well as the Express API server. Creating those is outside the scope of this video, but I'll add a card to an excellent video by Tutorial Edge that explains this whole process. Once I had those Docker files, I built the images and tagged them with the names React app and API server respectively. These tags are important because they're how we'll tell Docker Compose which container images we want to use. At this point, we have all of the components in place to start configuring Docker Compose. To do this, we create a file called docker-compose.yaml. In this file, we specify which version of the Docker Compose API we want to use. Version 3 is the latest major version of the API, so that's what I'm using here. After that, we define a set of services. In our case, our web app is composed of three services, the React app client, the Express API server, and the MongoDB database. Each of these services requires us to specify an image tag. Here we're using the client and server images that we built before, and for the database, we're just going to use a publicly available MongoDB image from Docker Hub. In order to communicate with the other services, we need to set up access to the proper ports for each of them. We'll connect to the React app on port 3000, the API server on port 5000, in the database on port 27017. For the React app container, I'll add the standard in open true option to keep the container alive and listening for requests after startup. Because the Express server needs to connect to the MongoDB service, we actually specify that it depends on that service. This ensures that the containers start in the correct order. There's one additional change to our API server code that we need to make in order for this connection to work. Within Docker Compose, different services are discoverable at a host name identical to the container name. So in this case, we need to change the connection string from using localhost to using Mongo, the name we use for the MongoDB service in the compose file. At this point, the configuration is sufficient to run the application, but there's two places that we can actually make improvements. The first is networking between the containers. Docker Compose would have set up a default network, but if we ever wanted to have multiple applications running on separate virtual networks, we'll need to define the network explicitly. Here I'm going to name the network MERN app, which uses the default driver. I'll add all of the services to this network. This will allow the services to talk to one another while providing isolation from other Docker containers that happen to be running on the same host. The last addition that I'll make is to define a Docker volume to enable persistence of the database data across container restarts. This is mounted into the MongoDB container at the proper path where Mongo is expecting to store its data. Okay, that's it. Let's run the application. As mentioned at the beginning, all that's required to run this is to run the command docker compose up. This will start all three containers as well as create and attach the network and volume resources. 
Once it's started, we can run docker ps on our system to see the containers running. Now for the moment we've all been waiting for. If I pull up a web browser and go to localhost on port 3000, we can see the application running in all of its glory. I can create a new movie listing, view the existing listings, etc. And the data for those movies gets stored into the MongoDB database within that volume. This is obviously just a simple example app, but the same technology stack can be used to build all sorts of web applications. A quick search in a job posting site like Indeed shows the demand for engineers who can build applications using these types of technologies. Hopefully this walkthrough will be helpful as you build out your own Dockerized applications with multiple components. Let me know within the comments section how you're using Docker Compose within your development workflow. If you want to continue down the Docker rabbit hole, my past few videos have been all about Docker, including how to debug containers, how to decrease image sizes, and to improve container security. So I recommend checking out one of those videos by clicking the cards over there. Now I release new content most Mondays, so make sure to subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss any upcoming content. That's all for today. Remember, just keep building.